Alrighty then, bonjour, ça va, uh, konnichiwa, hola, guten tag, uh, buenos dias, I'm trying, I'm trying here, yeah. ciao, hola, salam, uh, jambo, abari sana, jirisei, uh, hola, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to, to, to get everybody else in their house. How's everybody doing? I'm hoping that you're having a fantastic day. Chris, I see you're in the house. Robert, I see you're in the house too. Steven Seaton, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Everybody is here. Chris, uh, Nolan, Megan, everybody's here. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Obviously, those that know, I need not say, but my name is Prosper Tarovinga. And uh, yeah, today we're going to be talking about content. All right, this is something that's near and dear to my heart. Content strategies, how you actually reach out to, um, you know, your your fans, the people that actually care about the work that you're putting out there, and how you actually teach them what to want off your work, and how you actually teach them your pricing, how you actually teach them your message, etc., etc. Okay, so obviously, if this is your first time tuning in, I would like to welcome you and Charlie. Get your diary out, my man, so that we can plan our weekend escape. All right. Oh, is it just a coffee? Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Okay. So, obviously, as the con as the topic suggests, I'm really excited about this. Um, I don't know if you guys actually know what my real job is. My real job is I'm a SEO consultant. All right. But if I stopped at just t talking about SEO, none of you guys would have heard about me. None of you guys would have even wanted to hear anything that I say, none of you guys would have wanted to be my friend or anything like that because first of all, there's a stigma around SEO. People that do SEO are usually annoying. They don't really know what they're doing so they can't explain it well to you and then eventually it's too cumbersome and noisy, clunky and people don't want to barf it. Okay, so I treat SEO just like the way people don't know nutrition, just like the way don't people don't know um, sex, the way people don't actually know money. All right. So if you don't have financial education, that's the reason why you're not rich. If you don't have SEO knowledge, that's the reason why people can't find you. But there's always elements around that SEO and content is one of them. So that's the reason why I come in commercially with this whole message to help digital I mean, with this digital marketing message to help you start, scale, and grow a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable, okay? So I'm only just trying to, you know, um, save myself, save your ears so that I'm not constantly talking about SEO stuff because then you'll be bored and so would I be bored. But I want to ask you one simple question. Christopher, thank you so much for tuning in. Haven't seen you in a while. What's been happening, boss? Hope, you, uh, hope everything is okay. Uh, Francis Walker, thank you so much for tuning in. I want to ask you a question. Why are you here? Why do you why do you come to the internet? Can you just type in the comments there? Tell me what is it that you are looking for when you get on the internet? I just want to know. Everybody has different needs. Everybody has different um, you know, reasons why they tune into their Facebook, why they go onto um, YouTube. I just want to know why do you go on the internet? Do you know Tyler? Thanks for tuning in, by the way. Uh, Robert says, I'm looking for people to love on. <laughs> I know you and your hangouts, you make it all um, welcoming and I'm, um, I'm supposed to be joining in. Um, I think if you have a, another hangout, let me know so that I can uh, bring a couple of my friends that might be interested in doing that. So I've, I'm asking a question, guys. What, what, why are you on the Internet? Why are you here? Do you know the reason why you are on the Internet? Uh, Steven says self-improvement. OK, is that self-improvement? For yourself or the business or the people around you, etc., etc. Um, Charlie says, because I don't work. <laughs> and Robert says, that would be cool. All right, I'll, I'll have a quick look at that. Brent says, I purely want to know how to become an SEO consultant. Okay, that's, that's another thing we could always talk about. Um, and Charlie says, I don't need to work. Oh, get on you, mate. All right, so find time to have a meeting with me then if you don't have to work. 
Okay, so, I mean, there was a survey that they conducted, the people that have money and time to waste, and they conducted a survey, and you know what they, they f found out? I'm going to be reading this, so bear with me a little bit. They found out that 96% of us, or, or the people that come online, yes, it's 96%, they come to connect with others, all right? And then 89% of those people that were surveyed as well, they come to the internet to research stuff depending on what it is that they're doing within their profession or within their business, all right? 86% come to actually connect with friends and family, so that's for uh, on the social media side, and 82% of those people that were surveyed, they say they came to be entertained, all right? So from all those statistics and those things that were figured out, it is now apparent that people actually come to the internet to be entertained, to be informed, and to get more stuff, all right? Now, are you positioning yourself or are you putting yourself in front of the actual need of why people are coming to the internet? That's where we, we really need to really, really focus because you cannot go against the grain of why people are coming to the internet. Be a part of that. All right. So if people are coming to, to the Internet to be entertained, is your content entertaining them? If people are coming to the Internet to get information, are you also adding to the information pool that's available on the Internet with your brand, with your knowledge? If people are coming to the Internet to shop, are you putting yourself in, in the right position so that people can trust you enough to buy stuff off of you? All right. So that's just one thing that you really have to put a mindset shift over so that you can get to understand why people are actually, you know, trafficking the Internet so that you can be part of that, not against what they're doing. All right. So once I figured out that, that's when my whole content strategy started to change. You know, people are coming to be entertained. People are coming to be informed. People are coming to buy stuff. Now, if you notice all my content, all of my content, there's always a joke over there, or I'm entertaining people, or I'm informing people, or I'm actually asking them to buy stuff off of what it is that I'm selling, or what my clients are selling at that particular moment. That, that is all you've got to really focus on. Because all of these other things are smoke and mirrors. If you are not doing what other people are already, you know, going for the internet for, then I don't think you will be successful. Once you know the underlying reason why people are actually coming to the internet, right? So you want to put yourself in that, you know, sort of space so that you can then be amongst, you know, you, you, you become, you know, the line of sight of where they're headed already. All right, so if people are coming to the internet to be, to be entertained, are you entertaining them? Are you contributing to the entertainment pool of the content that's supposed to be around to entertain those people? That's why it's very difficult to make money on the internet because we are anticipating or expecting people to just like, share our stuff just because it's us. We are not, you know, you know, utilizing the full spectrum of what people are actually coming to the internet for. Nobody comes to the internet to, to, to look at your content. Nobody comes to the internet to look at your stuff. Or for Steven, your boats, or for David, whatever it is that you're selling at the moment. But you have to just align with what they came there for. And in the process, if they then like what you've got, you figure out a way, a way to build them. Don't you think this is the reason why it's difficult for you to actually make any traction on the internet because you are doing the exact opposite of what they came for? So as I started this topic today, I was talking about SEO and how I help, um, you know, other digital, uh, other, uh, you know, entrepreneurs like yourself to actually make more money with less struggle in their business. If you put out content that is really, really helping people to either get or stay entertained, if you're putting out content that helps people to be informed, if you're putting out content that helps people to purchase things that they're looking for, 
then you become top of mind or front of mind when they want to do transactions with you. Thanks for tuning in, Anthony, and thanks for tuning in, Dave. All right? So what I'm talking about today is nothing different. It's nothing new. Content marketing has been a concept that has been in and around the digital world for, for as long as we know. Content has probably been in the form of a newspaper, has been in the form of the radio, has been in the form of um, whatever means people were getting news, entertainment, and knowledge. So what we're just doing is re replacing all of that, okay? Content marketing was the paintings that were in the caves for the cavemen. All of that was communication. They were trying to communicate with the other person. They would sit around and talk stories. That was content marketing. The elders were producing content that was passed on for generations and generations. Right now, it has only just changed the medium, which is just, um, you know, um, the, 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 the Facebook or the blogs or whatever it is that you're using these days. So content has always been a part of us as humans. You just have to be part and parcel of what is already happening there so that people would know you, like you, and trust your stuff. And it's now more important than ever to be able, through your content, to tell your story, show your values, and show that you actually care. Yeah? And it's now, that's the reason why everybody else is getting confused about this. Nothing has changed. All you really got to figure out is the three M's of marketing. What your message is, what market that message is going to go to, the media can vary. The media is your Facebook, your blog, or whichever way you utilize to put that content out. All of that can change. And right now, I don't know if you're quite aware, Instagram is going to change the way marketers have always been doing their marketing on Instagram. And that's going to affect a lot of people. They really want that the, 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 the platform be for the user, uh, unlike what it has turned into like a marketing fest. So guess what Instagram has done? They've changed the layout of their platform. It's going to affect a lot of marketers. Right now, if you look at your Instagram, you have a three panel photographs. Um, when you go on your, on your profile, you see three rows. All right. Now they've extended that three grid to four grids. Guess what's that going to happen to all those people that had one picture that affected maybe one, two, three, four, five panels or, 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 or the nine first panels. That's going to make it look all disheveled. All right. So, so Instagram is just a media and now they're changing it. All right. And they don't care whether you spend hundreds of years trying to curate the content there. If your message is not aligned to your market, Instagram is probably going to be a hard thing for people to start marketing on. All right. Chad, thanks for tuning in. And I see Nat Nat Natalie just tuned in. Instagram has just changed and they're testing, like I said, if you're just tuning in, they're testing a four grid, um, you know, panel as opposed to the three grid that is there currently. So what does that mean? You get to see more pictures and they're smaller. What does that mean for the marketer? Your, 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 your content now has to be sharper and you can't have those, uh, you know, one picture affecting nine grids like it did prior. You probably know those pictures. Have you seen those? If you have time, if you have seen those, um, you know, one picture that affects nine grids, can you just type in so that I know that people are understanding what I'm talking about here? Can you type in if you know, if you know what I'm talking about, about that one picture that, that you can fit in your whole, your whole grid. So Instagram is changing the script, you know, overnight. It's all just going to happen and they're not going to care. All right. So if if you. All right. But if you are actually concentrating on really crafting what your message is. To your market. Guys, you will always be winning. So a lot of us are just being so romantic about the, 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 the media that we're using. 
And Nicole, thanks for tuning in. I was just talking about how Instagram is changing the three grids that we're used to, and they're making that panel into a four grid, um, you know, panel. No, that's all right, Nicole. Don't worry about it. Okay. So if 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 you if that was your marketing strategy, all of those pictures are gonna appear wonky. All right. So if you are not doing anything to Get connected to the people that are going to be paying you money. You can rest assured that all these platforms are consistently going to be changing. And whatever strategy you're going to be taught today is not going to help you. All you're really going to need is a solid strategy that supports your message. That goes to a market. The media can always change and it can always fluctuate as we are going to be seeing in the next couple of weeks when Instagram changes to a four pen. All right. So in saying that, it's no longer a one size fits all uh, sort of marketing strategy. If you notice, all right, it comes when it comes to your content marketing, you need to know who your customer is, what their pain really is. And what your solution you're going to be giving to them. All right. Instagram is changing and it's coming and, and, it, and they don't even care what marketers have been doing prior. So if, if people have been, you know, curating their, their news feed just so that it matches, you know, that whole three panel. Now you're going to have to make it a four panel up until apps come up to, to match that. All of those pictures are going to appear wonky and they don't care. But if you had spent your time connecting to the actual audience that you're going to be asking money off of, whatever structural changes on the platforms, it won't affect you. Facebook is consistently changing. This whole live thing was never there. A year ago, it was it was only open to um, uh, what do you call them? Celebrities. Now it's open to everybody else. They might just, you know, rip the carpet under our feet for all we know. So you should never really base your business on any social media or whatever strategy. You know why? Because they're constantly changing the script on us. You really need to figure out what your message is. Who are you serving? Who needs to hear that? And what payoff are you actually giving to those people? And what your product is. And like I keep saying, content really, like what Bill Gates wrote in his essay, although, you know, new age marketers, they think Grant Cardone or Gary Vaynerchuk is the person that started off with saying content is king. It was in an essay in 1996 that Bill Gates wrote and he said content was king. So content is really, really good if you really want to be found in the future by your prospects. Whenever you put out high quality or unduplicated content, it's really good for your SEO. All right. So people come to the Internet, like I've said, they come for information or to be entertained or they actually come, um, you know, to to buy stuff. And as we all know, people need to see your content at least six to eight times so that it makes sense for them to make that emotional, um, you know, um, decision. So if you really want to make some sort of significant SEO impact, whether it's on voice, on Alexa, on Google or whatever search engine is going to be utilized. And also Facebook has just recently turned themselves into a search engine as well. So you can actually search anything, any post, any picture on Facebook and it comes up. So if you're not putting out content and if you're not putting out stuff so that people get to find you, know you, and then follow you or get information from you, I think you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Because the higher your ranking, it ultimately exposes you to, you know, more digital customers that are actually willing and able to buy. Right about now, I know one thing for sure. None of the people that are watching these videos are my customers or my clients. Because if they were, they would have come up a long time ago and said, Hey, Prosper, let's find out what we can do. But I will consistently put out the content. You know why? Because this stays forever. So you should never really look at what's happening to you right now or around you. Constantly be giving out content that will then help you Connect with your future prospects or the ones that are watching right now so that they get to know you, like you, and trust you. 
And most of the times, you know, there's some marketing strategies that are being peddled around and being, um, you know, everything that just lasts for like a week or something like that. You end up wasting a lot of time, money and effort with no visible returns. Concentrate on building an audience and making sure that your message sticks with them. All right. Once you've built that audience, you want to nurture it with content. And you know what content does? It encourages engagement. That's all you should worry about. Because if you're going to worry about having the perfect Instagram feed, right now Instagram is changing the three grid layout. We're only going to have four. You're now going to have four pictures in, in, in the front row. I think that's going to be rolled out in the next week or so. What does that mean for people that were curating their content with that one picture for, for the whole grid? That means it's going to appear wonky because there's an extra grid that has been added there. All right. So good content, whether it's from a blog post or a social media update, it actually encourages um, your users to engage with your brand and then they get to know who you are. Hey, Mark Murray, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Yeah. So whether they realize that they're actually engaging with you or not, do you know what I mean? You are giving them the reason to actually come back for more. And like we said at the start of this video, if you are just tuning in and you really missed out on the first part, you can always watch the replay. All right. People come to the Internet to get information. And if your brand is not providing that information, you're missing out on how people can actually know you, like you or trust you. Um, Nicole says, I, I constantly wonder each morning, afternoon, if I'm putting out strong, engaging content. All right. So yeah, exactly. If you really want to find out if you're putting out engaging content, you get an instant result. Are people liking it? Are people sharing it? Are people asking you, um, you know, um, are people asking you anything regarding your, your, what you've put out? Because if there's no instant gratification or if there's no instant re response to your content, then that means it's not engaging enough. Are people quoting it or sharing it? That's your yardstick. All right. And uh, Chedu, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, Kurt, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Mark says, hey, man, any tips on starting a YouTube channel? Okay. So when you're starting anything on the Internet, you need to figure out, do you have people that have a need that you're solving do you have a niche that people are going to be constantly watching your stuff what are they going to be watching and why would they watch you consistently accept the other person what is going to be different about your videos and how consistent are they going to be people are tired of one click wonders mark all right. So you want to make sure that if you're putting content out there, it is actually engaging enough for people to actually want to, 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 you know, see more of it. You know, any good content would be definitely, um, you know, warranted. People would continuously watch it. Mark says, I love personal development. However, I'm in the logistics industry. Okay. So if you're in logistics, you can, you know, your niche can be the drivers that are constantly away from their families, the, the drivers that are constantly on the road. How do they stay motivated when, um, when, when they, um, you know, when, when, when they're on the road? How do they stay motivated to continuously try to do the same mundane work? Because driving may be boring, you know, because they're just sitting there. What are they doing in, 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 with their life while they're sitting there? They could be listening to your motivational tapes. So you want to figure out what is it that they want in life that you can provide while they're driving. All right. We can talk about this a little bit later when you're finished. And in the process, if you're putting out really good content, it generates leads and sales for your business. So good content creates a lot of brand awareness. That's the reason why I show up every single day for 30 minutes, just so that people know that I actually do know what I'm talking about. And if anyone really wants to, um, you know, engage with my stuff, then they know they're getting value. All right. So if you're putting out really good content, it creates brand awareness. It creates authority in, in a saturated market. Every person and their dog and their cat right now can be an internet sensation. 
But what you want to do is cut through that noise. How do you cut through that noise? You want to know that your message is specifically going to a market that is curated, whatever media you're going to use. I will, I will put the, um, Mark, I'll put the comments of my channel in the bottom there. All right. The more people are exposed to your brand, the more they know you, the more they like you, the more they trust you. So if you're not putting content out there, how do you expect people to know who you are or what it is that you provide or how much your services cost? Yeah. So, you know, good content is not salesy. Good content is not an advert. It just gives, you know, your customers or your prospects an opportunity to authentically engage with you and, you know, in, in, and, and then eventually it might, you know, end up as a transaction that you, you, you will be interested in. All right. So if you're going to be putting out really good content, you don't want to drown your customers in like product oriented co content, which has got a really big negative effect. People enjoy buying stuff. We all know that, but they hate being sold to. All right, I'm going to say something. It's a, it's a bit disgusting, but I mean, I want to really put out the point. My little girl is two and a half years old right now, and um, we are toilet training her. Okay, but I had to Google, um, you know, I had to look up how to toilet train a toddler. All right. And there was content about it all over the place. And there's one lady who actually has videos and a course that we're paying $50 a week for just to train the little girl how to go to the bathroom. All right. It's because I found her through content and the fact that it, the content was engaging and we did one simple thing and it actually worked. And we thought, you know what, if she's giving us all this information for free, what what could be behind the curtain that she's hiding that we got to pay for? And we, we fell for that. But it's a natural thing that any person can just teach their kid how to go to the bathroom. But somebody's actually making money from me off of that. All right. So if you're giving value and if you're actually helping people with a need or a problem or whatever it is, you are adding value to their lives. And the only way they can do that is to reciprocate back to you. And the only way people can reciprocate online is by giving you their credit card. Everybody is always trying to run away from some sort of pain. So if your content is helping people with the information, is, is, is entertaining at the same time, you then become part of the you know, overall decision-making process. You are no longer ignored. You become a trusted source of whatever information. Even if you sell them anything, they would still trust that. But if you just go in and just try and grab them by the... You're never going to win that battle. All right. So if you're putting out content, it has to, you know, add value in some way. And it's usually if you're helping somebody, nobody would ever say, you know, would ever say no. If you're actually helping them solve a problem that's pertinent in their everyday life. So you want to make sure that you're teaching them something new. You're providing a lot of tangible value in your content and, and you're not even asking for any money. Like I continuously say, we like buying things, but we don't like being sold to. Yeah. So if you're really, really going to be serious about, you know, um, your stuff out there and really, really want to start turning whatever traffic is coming to your website or your Facebook profiles or whatever it is, I really, really, really want to help you. And um, if you want to know some sort of ideas of what sort of content you can put out there, just type in content tips in the comments there and then I will send you a PDF with 100 content ideas that you can start utilizing today so you can engage with traffic. Type in content tips and I'll send through to you the PDF. All right. Christopher says, I do credit repair. That's something I don't do as ent entertain. I need to add that to my marketing. Christopher, credit repair is a, is a sensitive subject. Not a lot of people want to be known to be of bad credit. So you want to put out content there so that when people are Googling, because most of the time I wouldn't go to my uh, auntie and say, hey, auntie, how do I clean up my credit? It's embarrassing. 
All right. So what you want to do is put out content so that when people are searching, they find your stuff. All right. And when they do find your stuff, you put your phone number on there or you put a call to action and then people would actually ring you. You know why? Because you're providing them with value. The more you don't put out content, the more you're missing out on people that are actually actively searching for what you're offering. All right. I really want to help you. So if you really, really want to increase traffic, make more sales, um, you know, get more, really get more money. All right. I really want to help you start creating content with whatever, no matter how boring the subject is that you're working on, somebody is searching for it. And that's the reason why you are in that business. All right. So if you type in content tips there, all right, I will send you through a PDF that will help you start crafting content for your customers because people are coming to the internet to get information, to get entertained and to get to shop. But if your content is not aligned to any of those three needs, then I think you're just playing with yourself. All right. If you type in content tips, I'll send you through a PDF that has a hundred um, content ideas that you can start using today so that you are way ahead of your competition. And also start looking out for the new changes on Instagram. It's no longer a three panel for your, um, you know, uh, your profile feed. It is now a four panel. All right. So they're going to be, um, you know, putting through to that thing. And also, please share this video. Please share this video. Thank you so much. I really, really, really enjoy hanging around with you guys and help me help you type in content tips so that we can have a chat and then figure out how you can actually earn more money with less struggle. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.